Welcome, my name is Riccardo Caivano and I'm going to present our research about defect-driven topology optimization, in particular the extension of the TopFAT algorithm through the commercially available software Hyperworks for wide-ranging applications. Before starting, I would like to introduce my colleagues, Dr. Andrea Tridello and Professor Davide Paolino from Politecnico di Torino and Professor Filippo Berto from Norwegian University of Science and Technology. The presentation will be divided in five main sections. In the first, I will introduce the topology optimization framework. In the second section, I will briefly explain the key factors affecting the fatigue response of additive manufacturing products. In the third section, I will introduce the top FAT algorithm aimed at including the defect population analysis within the topology optimization setup. In the fourth section, I will detail how to extend the top FAT procedure to the commercially available software Hyperworks. And lastly, conclusions and final remarks. Topology optimization can be defined in several ways. Here, I reported a very intuitive and practical explanation. Topology optimization is the procedure aimed at finding the best material distribution within a certain loaded domain, chasing an objective and under prescribed constraints. As for the material distribution, one of the most employed methods is the so-called density-based method. In this method, the domain discretizes infinite elements, and each element has its own relative density, called rho. The relative density is zero if the element can be considered as void material, whereas it is one if the element can be considered as full material. In the end of the optimization, the rho equal to one zones will define the final topology. As for the objectives, they can vary a lot. The most common are the mass minimization and the stiffness maximization. Likewise, the constraints can be both geometrical, such as overhanging limitation, or structural, such as a maximum von Mises stress. For example, looking at the image, the classical simple supported beam is optimized for stiffness maximization under a volume constraint. The topology optimization can find the optimal structure, even the global optimal structure, if the optimization process is well posed. Anyway, the final topology is optimal only under the prescribed constraints imposed at the beginning of the optimization. Just to have a visual example, let's look at the L-shaped beams he reported. In both the cases, the L-shaped domain is locked in the upper edge and loaded in the right upper corner. The stiffness has to be maximized under a value constraint and very classical topology optimization setup. Looking at the left topology, no stress constraint has been imposed and therefore, the re-entrant corner is fully included in the final topology. The reason is that this maximizes the stiffness of the final structure, but in that point, in the re-entrant corner, high stress peaks can appear, and there is no control on them. On the contrary, the final topology on the right has been achieved including a von Mises stress limit. In this case, the topology is less stiff, but is structurally safe and, as a consequence, the topology optimization can be employed to safely design components. Topology optimization has been studied since 1980. However, the final geometries obtained with this method were almost always complex and very difficult to be realized through traditional and conventional manufacturing techniques. Recently, the advances of additive manufacturing processes allows to produce those geometries, even if convoluted and intricate. However, as discussed before, it is crucial to understand which are the key constraints to be included in the topology optimization setup, in order to safely design parts for the additive production. Looking at the life of the components, if the quasi-static regime is considered, a constraint on the von Mises stress may be sufficient. Instead, if the fatigue regime is considered, several questions must be answered to understand which constraints and fatigue model must be included. So, for example, how AEN parts respond in the fatigue regime, or what drives the fatigue response? The most important aspect to consider is the defect population, which affects the AM product's fatigue response. Indeed, AM parts are characterized by a non-negligible presence of process-induced defects, such as pores, cluster of pores, and lack of fusion. These defects cannot be eliminated, even if a perfect process parameter setup is employed. In this condition, classical fatigue theories may not be sufficient to predict the fatigue limit of the component. In particular, they may overestimate the real fatigue response of the part. The most suitable theory in this sense 
it is that of Murakami. His model can predict the maximum first principle stress, which can let nucleate and propagate a crack from the most critical defect. If that first principle stress threshold is not exceeded, then the part can be considered safe, even in presence of defects. With the aim of evaluating this limit, the defect population must be known. However, it can be accessed only after the part production with, for example, non-destructive techniques when the design phase is already concluded. In order to access the defect population during the design phase, it has to be estimated statistically a priori. Murakami demonstrated that the defect population follows the largest extreme value distribution, LEVD. Equation 1 expresses the LEVD distribution. It states the probability P of finding a defect with dimensions square root of A which represents an equivalent measure for the defect's area. As it can be seen, it is characterized by two main parameters, mu and sigma, which are the location and scale parameters of the distribution respectively. These parameters can be estimated experimentally looking at the defect population of several samples. Reversing equation 1, it is possible to foresee the largest defect area, square root of A, under a certain probability P, and this can be employed within equation 2. This equation expresses the link between the defect population, the stress ratio, the material parameters, and the maximum allowable alternate first principle stress, sigma f. This limit is the threshold which must not be exceeded in order to have a safe part in presence of defects. This limit, or the first principle alternate stress, can be included within the topology optimization formulation. In particular, here it is detailed the formulation of the top FAT procedure. The formula can be quite easily understood looking at the different terms that compose it. Basically, the aim is to find the relative density of each element in the domain, that is the topology, which minimizes the global competence. Meanwhile, the equilibrium must be effective, and this is guaranteed by the finite element model. The final value must be a fraction of the initial one. The von Mises stress must not exceed the threshold sigma s, in other words, the quasi-static limit. The first principle alternate stress must not exceed the threshold sigma f, only where attraction load is applied that is, the defect-driven fatigue limit by the previous equations. Lastly, the relative density must belong to the range 0, which means void material, and 1, full material. The top FAT procedure has been solved in MATLAB, and actually it is a property code. However, even if this algorithm is well working, its applicability on industrial cases is limited. The possibility to extend the top FAT procedure to commercial software would let industries and academics include the defect-driven constraint within the topology optimization to safely design AM parts. This extension brings many positive aspects, such as complex 3D meshes, assembly evaluation, straightforward post-processing, and much more, without any coding procedures. The only required modification with respect to the previous topology optimization setup is that Hyperworks does not admit a constraint of the first principle alternate stress, whereas on the first principle maximum stress. For this reason, the more common limit is transformed into a limit of the first principle maximum stress, according to the highlighted equation. Let's consider a classical Corbell structure as reported. It is supposed to be manufactured in aluminium by AM process. The volume fraction for the final topology is set to 30%, and the yield stress is 260 megapascal. In the table, all the data related to the defect population and the material info are detailed. Let's suppose the load is applied close to the right upper corner, downward with intensity 600 newton. Depending on the value of the stress ratio, two main situations can occur. First, if the stress ratio is positive, f-min is concord to f-max, but is scaled down of a certain factor. 
This means that the portion of material subjected to a traction load is constant during the load cycling. In this case, it is enough to ensure that the limit of the first principal maximum stress is respected in the F-max condition and the component is safely designed. Reversely, if the stress ratio is negative, F-min is discord to F-max and a portion of material under traction changes during the load cycling. In this case, two different load cases must be considered, one with F-max and one with F-min, and the Murakami limit must be verified in both the cases. Looking at the first principal alternate stress, evaluated according to the Murakami model, it varies according to the upper left plot. It is the highest for complete fully reverse tension compression and zero for R equal to one. Looking at the first principal maximum stress, upper right plot, it is clear that the most critical situation is when the stress ratio is equal to minus one, whereas it degenerates into the quasi-static limit, increasing the value of R. This plot can be easily used to impose the defect-driven constraint in the topology optimization setup, depending on the stress ratio value. The plots below this the defect population as predicted by the LEVD distribution. These are the final topologies obtained with Hyperworks, imposing the defect-driven constraints under different stress ratio conditions. For R equal to minus 1 and minus 0.5, two different load cases have been employed. In the first scenario, the defect-driven constraint on the first principal maximum stress is 116 MPa and it is respected in both the load cases. In the second scenario, with R equal to minus 0.5, the limit is higher, about 144 MPa, and again, it is respected too, in both the load cases. It is worth noting that the compliance in this case is lower, indicating that the loading conditions are softer and the algorithm can find a stiffer solution. When the stress ratio is positive, only one load case is needed, and the limit is much higher, about 196 MPa and 213 MPa for R equal to 0 and 0 0.1, respectively. In these cases, the solution is all, almost identical, and the compliance reaches its minimum independently from the stress constraints. In order to better visualize the stress distribution, let's look at the first principal maximum stress within the final topology obtained with R equal to minus 1. Two load cases are considered, the first with F max downward and the second with F min upward equal to F max. These are the results directly from the topology optimization solver in Hyperworks. In both the load cases, the stress is inferior to the imposed limit of 116 MPa, guaranteeing the fatigue safety. The traction zones that is, with positive first principal maximum stress, are very different, stating the need for two different load cases. Overall, neither if the critical defect was present in the re-entrant corner, it would let any crack nucleate and propagate. So, to conclude, topology optimization is a very powerful tool for lightening structures and maximizing component performance. However, if the physical limits of the material are not included in the topology optimization, the final component may fail. Additive manufacturing techniques are suitable for producing topology optimized parts, however, they suffer from process induced defects. These defects drive and lower the fatigue response of the part, and they must be included in the topology optimization setup. The defect presence can be included in the topology optimization according to the Murakami model as a constraint on the first principal maximum stress. In the present paper, this methodology is extended to the commercially available Hyperworks topology optimization solver for most types of cycling loads. The present case study is a guideline to include in the topology optimization framework both quasi-static and fatigue limits, leading to reliable optimized components for several industrial applications. Thank you very much for your attention.